video we're going to go over how you can do logging out the user. So there's two parts to this. The first is actually calling the logout mutation. And what this will do is it'll get rid of the session on the server. And then after that, what we want to do, and it'll also clear the cookie on the browser. And then the second thing we want to do is just clear the cache um, so there's no data left behind after that user has logged out. So let's go ahead um, and get started with this. Now we could do this in a similar manner that we did in the last video where we used the with Apollo higher order component. So I could wrap um, this GraphQL and use a logout mutation and then use with Apollo inside. And then in my controller or whatever over here, I would call out the logout mutation and then I would also call um, the reset store on the client. But I wanna do this in a little different manner reason for that is just to show you guys another way you can go about doing this and we're going to be using the um, mutation component from React Apollo. So I'm going to create a new module here called logout and um, I guess we can call it logout controller and I'm going to say index.tsx and the first thing I'm going to do here is add the GraphQL that we need. So I'm going to import GQL from GraphQL tag and I'm gonna say const, and we're gonna have a logout mutation. And I'm just gonna copy the code, oops, over here. So this here's what we need to do around the logout mutation. It run, returns a Boolean, so there's no need to grab anything. Um, so this is a pretty simple one. And then you'll notice I gave it a name, I called it logout mutation here. So now in my controller, I can say yarn gen types, and then we can get the TypeScript types for this. So now up here, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna import um, React. So import star as React from React. Oops. And let's go over here so we can see our types. And the other thing I want is React Apollo. And what I want from this is the mutation. So this is a, a component that is gonna be a rendered prop. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna export const logout controller. And I'm just gonna do this as a functional component. And we say react.sfc for functional components. And here I'm gonna pass in the props. So I'll create an interface for that. For now, the props are gonna be uh, nothing. We don't really need to take anything in. Um, we're gonna have a child, so children, and it's gonna return a jsx.element or null. So we're gonna have basically a rendered prop of our own with this login controller, similar to how we did with the other ones. And then I'm going to pass in the props right here. All right, so that should just be an equal sign right here. So we don't really need to take any props in. What we're going to do is we're gonna render this mutation component. So the mutation component itself is a rendered prop. So that's why I'm doing um, this right here. So we have a mutation and then here I have a function and what we're gonna return is children. So I'm gonna say children. So children we get from just from the uh, our props. So we're gonna use this similar to how the login controller is used and it has this children over here. So this is our children, we get it from there and then we're just going to display the children. Um, that's what we're gonna return. Now we're gonna call it like a function like we did before, but first we need to add some things onto our mutation. So we have to pass in a prop called mutation to specify what we want it to be called. In this case, we're gonna pass our logout mutation right here. Now, I would like type definitions for this. So to do that, we add angle brackets to this. So the first one is going to be um, just the logout mutation. And this is coming from schema types. And the second one is any variables it has. In this case, there are no variables, so I can just leave that blank. Um, or I can just do that, either one. So now I have some things 
um, that I can destructure here. The things that I care about is mutation. I, I don't know if it's called mutation or mutate. I think it's called mutate. And the second one is client. So I actually have access to the client right here. Um, for a reason, it doesn't look like I'm getting good um, type definitions for this. At least I'm not getting like auto completion stuff here. I'm not sure why. But now in my child or in my children, what I'm going to return is a function called logout. And so I'm now just going to pass a lambda there. And this is going to be an async function. So for this, we're going to call mutate. And we're going to await that. And when that's done, we say client.resetStore. And we now need to update our children up here because it's now going to return a um, object that has logout in it. So I'm going to say data. And this is going to be an object that has a function called logout in it. And this function is going to be an asynchronous function, um, but it returns void. And let's see what's going on here. Mutate. You know what? It may be, I think I'm just using this wrong. I think I do mutate and here are any of the props that I want. Yeah, that's what I was doing wrong. Okay, so this is not like the query. I forgot about that. So the mutation higher order component, the first, or not higher order component, but uh, rendered prop. The first argument is the actual function. So when I call mutate here, what it's doing is it's running this guy here. And then we just have a whole bag of options that we can choose from as the second parameter. So um, it gave me a better auto completion a second ago. Here it is at the top. So we can see whether I've called it before. I'm not sure why there's data associated to this. There really shouldn't be any data with mutation. Maybe this is what's returned from the mutation. Um, and then here's uh, loading is a nice one, so you can display whether we're loading the mutation. But anyway, that's pretty much it that we have to do with this. So now on our website, what we can do is we can just call logout, and it will reset the store and all that jazz. And reset the store is also something we want to await, so let's do that. All right, so let's come over here to schema types, or not schema types, index.ts. Reason I want to export that. So I'm going to say modules, logout, controller, and let's go ahead and build this now. So I'm going to say yarn build. And then the way I like to use this on the front end, so in our web over here, is I like to create a module. We're going to create a logout module as well. And how the logout module works is it's just going to be a route. So I'm going to create index.tsx. And for now, I'm just going to say, hold this low for a second. I'm just going to say, like, hello. Um, it's going to be logout. So this is where I want to call it. And I'm now going to add a route, so routes index.tsx, and this is going to be a logout. And then I'm just going to render logout as the component. So now what's going to happen is what I want, or what I want to happen is whenever I visit the slash logout route, uh, I would like it to log me out and then redirect me to say, uh, I don't know, the home page or something. So now what I can do is I can add like a button or a header or something. So I'm just going to add this to create listing. But really, ideally, you want to add this to if you have a header or something. So ideally, we make a header. But in my form here, I'm just going to add something at the top, I guess. So I'm going to use a link here. It's going to say log out. It's just going to take me to log out. So link is coming from React Router DOM. So let's import it. Um, and so what this is going to do is I'm now going to have a link on this page that I can click on. So let's go over to create listing. And oh, I need to be logged in. Nice, we just fixed this yesterday, so this should work okay. 
nice okay so I have this button over here called log out and when I click it it just takes me to log out so right now I haven't implemented the logic yet we're gonna call that function but that's how I'm gonna be able to log out really from any page I want to is just have a link that takes me to the screen so now in the log out so just rendering hello what I want to do is render that uh, log out controller so now this is a rendered prop as well and this has our log out now really I want to call this as soon as the component mounts and then redirect so what I'm going to do is uh, this would actually work a lot better if this was a higher order component because what I could do is I could just say component did mount and I could call log out here that's what I would like to do so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new component here called call log out and we're basically just using this to put our logic in so I'm going to actually I guess I should fill this out real quick call log out and it's going to take log out as a prop and it's just going to call it so it's going to be void it's going to take that it's going to say component did mount and it's going to call this.props.logout and we can make this async and we can wait for it to finish and whenever it's finished um, maybe we have an on finish function uh, I did that wrong and we'll call this dot props dot on finish and this guy will just return null so I'm really just using this component for the component did mount so whenever this mounts uh, I'm going to log the user out and then I'm gonna call on finish so now over here I can render call log out and so I'm gonna pass log out and it auto completed that but I don't want that so log out pass in log out and then on finish I really just want to redirect so I'm gonna say on finish this dot on finish and we'll create that function up here and I'm gonna say this dot props dot history dot push and I guess we'll just go to the home page for now or I guess let's take us back to the login page because the user has the log back in now this is red right now because I don't have the props for that so let's import it react router dom route component props and we don't have any match so this is just gonna be an empty object all right, so this looks pretty good. Let's test this out. So I'm currently logged in. And we can see that if I come over here to application, we see that. And let's see if it allows us to see the cache as well. All right, so we have that. So now I'm gonna click log out. I'm now on the login screen. Um, alternatively, you could maybe show a message that's like successfully logged out. That would be a good one to show as well. Um, we could use our message screen if we wanted to and if I come to application looks like the cookie is still here so I'm curious if something went wrong um, it looks like it worked so we might need to investigate that um, looks like it called the logout mutation okay as well if we look at the response the response headers so one of the response headers should be to um, kill the cookie and it doesn't look like it is so this could be a server side problem we'll look at this in tomorrow's video let's see if the cache um, was successfully cleared so we'll reopen it so let's see the cache of course let's try one more time cache okay it won't even let me see the cache right now I don't know what that's about maybe because we just cleared it and it's totally blank that could be it let's see if there's any queries I don't see any queries any mutations won't see that I'm thinking the cache got cleared okay and it's just a logout we have to worry about um, we can actually 
if I go to create listing, let's see what it says. It takes me over here. Um, that that would make me think that we have cached to say the user is off. Though I'm not sure what's going on with the um, cookie right here. But yep, that's it for this video, guys. We will see what's going on with the cookie in tomorrow's video.